All right, welcome to the fourth talk. Um, this is not specifically, uh, this is tangential to TMDLs, but this is just uh, something that I wanted to talk to you about in terms of your calculating a load duration curve. If you remember earlier on in the year, we, or earlier on in the semester, we looked at a, a flow duration curve uh, and so it was purely flow. Now, load adds a, a, a dimension onto it. Remember that load is basically flow times concentration. And so uh, what we have here, what I have here is a spreadsheet where I've gone to the USGS to you know, this, this particular stream uh, uh, and, and got its flow in cubic foot per second and then gone to the uh, the stream monitoring station that's closest to that one. It's not directly next to it, but it's close by. Uh, and in fact, it's rare to have two of these things close by, but in this case, it works out. Um, so you've got a place where you've got a flow, and then you've got a, a place where you've got a monitoring station. So you see the dates. And then what I, the, the tedious part of this is you, I got the data and then I matched the data up with the particular date. So for instance, we know from Storette for S046, we got a fecal coliform of 540 CFUs per 100 mils on this particular day where your flow was uh, 34 cubic foot per second. So basically that's what we did there. And I'm going to give this to you, so you'll be able to, so you'll be able to see that. Um, if we go to the next, if we go to the next uh, tab, the intermediate part is, well, what do you do? Well, it's not that dif different to what we did with the um, uh, with the flow duration curve. We basically took these two columns and we went ahead and ranked them according to your average flow starting from lowest to highest starting going from about one to you know 1880 cubic foot per second so that's uh, that's basically what it is and what was that that's about 2834 bits of data uh, that you have or data data points that you had and now you see that uh, you've got different um, you've just arranged these and as as you've arranged your your flows your dates are no longer in order and you can see then your concentrations of uh, E. coli then base fecal color form then basically follow so these are still corresponding with the date, but you've arranged everything now based on your USGS flow. The next thing you do is you're going to go ahead and rank them. And if you go ahead and hit that uh, ranking, uh, it's going to be B2. Uh, or if, if I, let me just do this. If I do this equals rank, you basically... You, you select your number and then you actually look at your reference. And the reference in this case, the number is going to be 1, but your reference is $B$2 to $B$2835. So when you copy these things down, your reference will be B7, but the re uh, your your number will be what you're looking at compared to your reference will still be will be B7, but your dollar signs are going to a uh, anchor that reference uh, down. So basically, this provides your rank in terms of flow from lowest to highest over here. Uh, for instance, we've got a flow of one. Well, it's just going to be ranked uh, the same two eight nine zero. So, if you remember back to your um, flow duration curve, you've got a, an exceedance calculation, which is basically statistics, statistical, 
which is based on your rank. So it's 100 times your rank divided by the number of data points. In this case, it's 2834 plus 1. And that is going to be your flow exceedance. So essentially, now I've, I've just rounded it up or down to 99. Essentially, what you're saying is that there's a 99.47 or a 99% probability on any given day that your flow, ex and given no other information, that your flow will exceed one cubic foot per second. So this one cubic foot per second corresponds to down here. And then if you remember, we can plot this on a chart uh, where our flow exceedance is on the x-axis and the USGS flow in cubic foot per second is on the y-axis. If we leave it, well, let me show you what it looks like, format axis. If we leave it in, in linear scale, it'll look like that. So we really want to keep it in log scale. Let me see if, oh, no, I can't move it. So if you look at it in log scale, that's what it's going to look like. Okay, so that's arranging the flows and flow exceedances in, in one place. So now, once, once we've got that, we go on to the actual load duration curve calculations. Well, we know we've got our flows. We've got our flows. Uh, shoot. Uh, this is not flows, and this is uh, rank. Okay. Um, and let me just double check that. Oh, sorry, it is flow. Escape. Forgive me. It's flow in meters cubed per day. Uh, and what I did over here was kind of just have some. Let's just put these out of the way here. Flow in cubic meters per day. So. Uh, for one cubic for one cubic meter is equal to uh, or one cubic foot is 0 0.028 cubic meters and they're 86,400 seconds a day. So over here we are taking our flow in cubic foot per second, multiplying it by this and then by this, and you're getting 2,447. So that's uh, that's basically what's going on over here. And you're basically getting flow in cubic in terms of cubic meters per second. Now here's the kind of part that you'll need to understand. We now multiply the flow cubic meters per day, sorry, not cubic meters per second, cubic meters per day times the criterion. And this is it over here. Um, now your criterion is 400. Um, CFUs per 100 milliliters. Uh, I've done a few little calculations here, but it's 400 CFUs per 100 mils, but it's actually 4 million CFUs per cubic meter. So you're multiplying your flow times your criteria, which is 400 CFUs. So you're saying the load for a given flow of one cubic foot per second, your load may not exceed 9.79 times 10, 9 9.8 times 10 to the 9 CFUs per day, C, uh, CFUs or fecal color forms per day. Now, I just put my margin of safety in, uh, TMDL minus my margin of safety. I said my margin of safety, let's say for example, my margin of safety is 20%. So TMDL minus my margin of safety is 0.8 times 12. Let's say, watch this chart here now. Let's say my margin of safety is 50%. So 1 minus 0.5 is that. Let's uh, propagate that down. Uh, 
and let me have a look. Gonna have to propagate that the old fashioned drag and drop way. Because I don't know the shortcut keys in this is gonna be slow. Okay, what you can see is that um, for this part I've applied the 50% margin of safety and you can see now there's more daylight between your TMDL and your margin of safety. Of course, you, if you have a margin of safety, you don't want to exceed that margin of safety. So I'm going to undo that. I just don't know the shortcuts in uh, my MacBook for Excel. <coughs> so you've got that uh, and so basically you can plot this on a curve. Now if you go look at your this, this was in terms of flow, but this over here will be in terms, these axes now are in terms of CFUs per day. And you can see now you've got these awfully, awfully big numbers. Next thing you can do is calculate your actual load per day. And here you're going to multiply your um, Oh, I couldn't see it. Okay. Here you're going to multiply your fecal coliform measurement by your flow, and then, of course, uh, you're going to multiply it by 10,000 because you're measuring per 100 mils. So that's just a conversion unit. Uh, and so you're going to get these numbers over here. So um, I put a little if statement in here. If you can see, if C2 is equal to quotes, if, if there's nothing in those quotes, that means there's nothing, then you say, okay, well, let it be nothing, or if it's not, then it'll be C2 times H2, H2 would be your flow in meters cubed per day times 10,000. 10,000, of course, is that conversion factor. And so, what that does is it basically provides blanks in everything unless there's a number over here uh, in, uh, in cell C45. Because there's a number, you will now have a, an actual load. So you've got your TMDL, your TMDL minus your margin of safety, and then your actual load. Well, how does that look like in a chart? Well, let's get that chart over. Well, that's what it looks like in the chart. So your actual loads now are overlaid over your TMDL minus mar margin of safety. Now watch this, is uh, if you have a load that's below this margin of safety line, that means that your TMDL has been met. If the load, the actual load, is above that line, it means that the TMDL has been exceeded. Watch this trend as your flow, remember, as your flow increases, this is, this is related to your flow. You're watching what is actually happening to your actual, uh, your actual data versus the TMDL. And what you're seeing is, for the most part, your samples or your TMDL is being met, but where it's being exceeded, 
uh, it starts being exceeded in the middle, but for every high flow event, your TMDL is being exceeded. So uh, a load duration curve gives you a little bit of an indication of what this looks like. Now, we've also had a look, let's add our waste load allocation to this whole thing. And what you can see now is um, your, waste, uh, your waste load allocation is a, that's coming from a particular, if you have a look in the spreadsheet, whoop, if you're looking in the spreadsheet here, um, your waste load allocation comes from a, a specific um, wastewater treatment plant that produces so many cubic meters per day at so many cubic foot per hundred mils. And so that's how many fecal coliform it has per day. So your waste load allocation is going to be a constant and it's not going to depend on how much flow you have in the river. So your actual load allocation that you can give for a given flow is then going to be the difference between the TMDL minus the margin of safety minus the waste load allocation because if you remember your TMDL is waste load allocation plus load allocation plus margin of safety. So graphically in this area uh, the area between this blue line and the red line is what you can call your load, not load, load allocation. So I hope that this gives you an indication. Again, the, um, the load duration curve gives us an idea of where we are likely to see our exceedances. And typically, well, what we're seeing right now is if we had to analyze, maybe... 10% of our samples would exceed here, maybe 20 to 25 would exceed here, but this is where about 100% exceeds. And so it's saying, well, in this case, and typically where non-point source pollution prevails uh, in high flow situations, uh, your TMDLs, uh, your bacterial concentrations are going to go up. If it's, or, or whatever, your pollutant concentrations are going to go up. If your system is dominated by a point source, the higher your flow, the lower your pollutant concentration is going to be. Um, I'm going to send this out and hopefully you can learn from this um, and I'd be happy to ask, answer any questions. I, I suspect that you will probably be seeing one of these things in the exams as well. So be aware, be forewarned. You can ignore this right now, but uh, if you kind of get familiar with this, you're going to sort of avoid anxiety uh, in your exams if I, if I throw one of these at you. Okay, uh, guys, thank you very much and look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.